Hi, welcome to the video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Book Trader, which is a feature in the Trader Workstation platform by Interactive Brokers. I have a lot of other tutorials on the platform Trader Workstation. By no means am I affiliated with Interactive Brokers in any way at all. In fact, I just enjoy making tutorials on their platform. So if you gain some value from this content, guys, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and you can also leave me a donation. All right, let's get to it right now. Here we go. This is what a book trader looks like. So it's a price ladder, essentially, right? So you see the bid and the offer. Now, we're going to talk about this because the book trader is is a way that you can execute orders. And I would argue from experience that executing off of the book trader might be slightly more efficient than executing off of a chart, for example. Now that's up to you. I'm just saying that from my own experience. So how do we get a book trader? Well, first of all, you need to have a TWS window open. This is a mosaic TWS. Just go up here to new window on mosaic, and then you should see book trader pretty close by over here. Click on that and it's going to bring up a book trader. All right, so now that you have that, you're going to see this and this is not going to be working until you put in a symbol let's bring up the financial instrument nq so that's a futures contract we're just going to select it and there you go you can see that it is now displaying the depth for 10 prices and the bid and the offer all right fine so now how do we use the book trader i want to go through all of the settings of the book trader in this video right so just to recap what we're going to look at all of the nitty-gritty things about the book trader and some glitches i've encountered with it as well and things that are annoying that you need to work with just to show you what's the purpose of the book trader before we start this basically it's so you can put in orders right off of here so if you're scouting a certain option or if you're trading a stock or whatever you're trading basically you can use this book trader to put in orders right so if you know you need a limit at that price you go find your price and you just click on it and then you see I have a limit now in the market at that price you can also set up a key to cancel those orders so for example let's say you're looking to scale into a position you set up a bunch of limits you can see I have three buy limits right there just by clicking on it I've set those in and of course you can configure this to set any kind of order type you need that is available in the IB platform right so in this case you can see that when I hold shift and click on a price it's going to create a stop order so if I click on the sell side while holding shift it's going to create a sell stop order at this price so that's convenient right so let's say I want to get long here I'm filled fine and I want to sell limit here all I need to do is click there and I've got sell limits in and those got filled really quickly right so trading off the book trader can be very efficient for some things and that's why I think it's important that we look at it so that's what this video is all about and I'm also going to briefly compare it to another platform that I use which is jigsaw day trader it's not as good as jigsaw let's be honest but it does the job all right so let's get right to this click on this configure button right here and you're going to see this is the menu that gets brought up now here we have the component components to start off with the components if you check all these boxes and click apply what you're going to see is that now we have a whole bunch of different things here showing up we have buttons we have the quote panel and we have the deep book buttons buttons to execute orders now if you don't want to see all of that there's two ways you can get rid of them you can either uncheck these boxes like we just did or you can go up here to this little down arrow and then you can click on this little icon and what this will do is this will full screen the book trader and basically you're going to use this when everything is armed and ready to go you're going to want to full screen it so you don't have to waste space on your screen for no reason so for example say the book trader is working i would full screen it using Using that drop down menu and click on full screen all right so for now let's keep it not full screen just to show you back to the settings menu all right so price ladder status column this is important because when you put in orders you're going to see these little status columns on the left and right in this case you've got one for the buy side and one for the sell side if you click on do not show status column you're not actually going to be able to see when you have an active order in the market so I would recommend you to keep that on show single status column per side if you have it set to show separate status for each individual order, then I feel like it's gonna get confusing. Like I'll just show you, if you have it set to that, every time you put an order in, it's gonna create a new column. So look at that. That's not exactly user friendly. I personally don't know why this is even part of the platform. I think that's just such a pointless feature. So you, you just saw that and you can see that it just basically destroyed my resizing of these columns and it made my columns look weird, right? So what I'm gonna do now is set it back to the way it was and you can see that it brought it back, cool. So like I said, I suggest keeping it on show single status column per side, one for the buy and one for the sell. And let's keep going here, price ladder order control. Now these are important settings. When your bid or ask size column is clicked at an empty price level and there's already an existing order on that side, what do you want it to do? Either create a new order at the price you click on or move existing order. 
I prefer to create a new order because like I just showed you before, you can click on multiple prices to have multiple limits at different prices. And again, that's gonna be useful if you're scaling into a position or scaling out of a position. The next one is if the bid or ask size column is clicked at a price level that already has an existing order, you can choose to cancel that same order or create a new order at the same price. In that case, I would select cancel the order because all you need to do, in that case, you click on the price to create an order and then you just click on the same order to cancel it order canceled. and then it works pretty well. You can also configure a hotkey to cancel the orders and we're gonna talk about that later in the video. We're gonna move on now to one of the annoying features about the book trader and that is the recentering function. You have a setting right here. You can either choose to recenter when the midpoint of the bid or the ask moves X amount of rows away from the center view or the last price X amount of rows away from the center view. Now, the problem with this right now, when the midpoint of the bid and ask moves five rows from the center view, it doesn't recenter right away. What it does is it starts a 10 second timer and then after those 10 seconds have gone by, then it recenters. So we'll show you that right away. So go down to the bottom. You see this little checkbox right here that says display auto scroll countdown after scrolling. All right, I'm gonna check that box right now. And what's gonna happen now is that every time the DOM goes five ticks away from the center, it's not going to recenter right away. Like I said, what it's going to do is set a timer. So it's a five second timer. You saw that? Boom, and then it recenters. So that recentering function, in my opinion, is just horrible. So I turn on the timer thing here and you can see how annoying that is. So generally you wanna keep that box unchecked, but I had to turn it on just to show you that there's a timer that gets triggered every time your recentering gets triggered. It doesn't recenter right away. In fact, it just triggers a timer. Let's keep going with the settings here. And some of these settings are important. Some of them are not important at all. So you can choose here, how many rows do you wanna be displayed on this book trader? This is going to depend on the market you're trading and if you need to display multiple prices, put in orders at a far away price, for example, right? I have it set to 60, but you can pretty much play with that and you can see how many rows you actually need to display. So the more you display, you're gonna be able to scroll up and down and see more prices there. Order reference, this should be generally stuck to book trader. Um, I believe that if you put an option onto the book trader, this is automatically going to be set to the uh, option chain. Okay, let's move on. So show cumulative size in the bid and the ask. That's handy and that should always be checked because what that does is say you're trading a stock that has liquidity on many exchanges. Basically, you just wanna show the cumulative of available size at those prices, not from individual market makers. You wanna show the whole thing, okay? Display the PL column, so this is useful. So I have it set on right there. You can also choose to show a volume histogram. Again, not the most useful and not the best looking volume histogram, but it's still there just for your own knowledge. Use context cursors in armed mode. What that's gonna do is that when you hover your mouse over the bid, it's going to say buy and when you hover your mouse over the offer, it's going to say sell. So keep that on, probably works well. Let's move on here. Allow multiple untransmitted orders. Basically that's useful if you need to transmit a lot of orders. So if you have, for example, if you have a big position and you need to scale out slowly, so you sell limit, sell limit, sell limit, sell limit. That's an example where you would need to have multiple untransmitted orders. So probably good to have that box checked. Display size column in the price ladder. This size column is pretty much useless. I'll turn it on and you'll see. So now we have size. Basically, it shows you the size of your orders. So in that case, one contract. And that's all it does. You should already pretty much know the size of your orders that you're putting in. So I don't really think that this size column is very useful. Um, you can choose to display the market maker names if you want. Not very useful again, especially if you're trading a product that has only one exchange, like a futures contract. Show bold prices every five lines. I don't find that very attractive, so I turn that off. Um, show data outside of regular trading hours. Probably wanna keep that on. Remember armed state between sessions. If you do check this box, then the book trader will remain armed the next time you log into a session. If you don't check the box, then the book trader will not be armed the next time you log into a session. So the way you arm the book trader, very simple, is that at the top part of the book trader, when it's not in full screen mode, you're going to see this armed, and then set your default size, and you just check this box, this last setting on the bottom right is important. Suppress duplicate events. Now, what I notice is that if you try to click really quickly on the book trader while this box is checked, it's not gonna send all the orders you clicked on. So I'll just show you real quick. I apply that. Now, if I try to put in a bunch of buys. Order canceled. 
See, it's not necessarily putting them all in because the system thinks that I'm creating duplicate events. So I would recommend you to turn that off unless you have a clicking problem. A couple I missed here, we have display auto scroll countdown after scrolling. You wanna turn that off because that's the annoying countdown thing that shows up every time the thing recenters. And this last setting is color marketable pricing area. So I'll turn that off and you'll see what I mean. Now we have the entire bid size is green and the entire ask size is red. And if we turn that back on, you're going to see that it looks more like a traditional price ladder where you see the bid and then the offer, fine. So keep that one checked. At the bottom, we just have the font size and that is pretty much it for the book trader settings. All right, so I wanna talk about one glitch that I found out in the book trader. It is the glitch that when you try to submit an order, it tells you no default destination. It doesn't know where to send the order. And I know how to fix this. Where you go is you go into TWS, you go to file, global configuration and you're going to go to your order presets menu all the way down here to presets and go to whatever product you're trading in this case futures and now that you're in this menu go all the way down to the bottom and you're going to make sure that this box right here no default destination is not checked because if this box is checked then it will not know where to route your order. In the case of a futures contract, there's only one exchange. Do not check this box because that exchange is in fact the default that it should be routed to. So make sure that this box is unchecked to get rid of the glitch that tells you invalid exchange. Fine, let's move on. Hotkeys. Hotkeys are very good in Trader Workstation, but we still need to talk about them in the book Trader. So what we do to get hotkeys going is we, first of all, we go to settings, then we're in the menu. Now we go to hotkeys. So I'll show you an example of four hotkeys I created and they're very simple. So by limit, when you click on the bid size, sell limit when you click on the ask size, buy stop limit and sell stop limit when you shift and click on either the bid size or the ask size. So the way we configure this is very simple. So let's say you wanna configure a buy limit when you click on the bid size. So you go to the top menu and then you click on buy. Now we go to create shortcut. All right, now at this point we need to make sure that the mouse shortcut is set to the right thing. You can also configure a hotkey to do it if you want. Record a keyboard shortcut. Let's say you just want it to be left click on the bid size for it to work. So you make sure this is set to left click. Then you go to market data field, and this has to be set to either your bid size or ask size, depending on if it's a buy order or a sell order. In this case, it's a buy, so I'll select bid size. Now I'll click apply, and now the current mouse shortcut is left clicking on the bid size will trigger this hotkey that I'm about to set up right now. So in this case, a buy. Now we need to select the order type. Let's say limit in this case, and then we can select the limit price. Now this is important. If you want the order to come up at the price you click on, this needs to be set to book trader price. If you set it to anything else, then when you click on the bid size, your order is gonna pop up at a random area. So make sure this is set to book trader price always. And every time you click on the price, it's gonna send an order at that price. Fine, it works well. All right, you can also attach stops and profit takers, of course. And if you don't know how to do that, go and watch my bracket order video on TWS. We also wanna make sure that the transmit the order instantaneously is selected because that means that when you click on the book trader it will actually send your order live to the market right away from what this just told me i do not think that adaptive is possible for certain products you would have to try it in a demo account first in this case i'm demonstrating it using a futures contract most of the other orders pretty much work i have experience using the relative order and that works fine off of the book trader but again looks like the adaptive does not work for certain products all right, I'll just show you briefly how I created these stop limit orders. Buy stop limit and the mouse shortcut is shift and a left click on the bid size. If you need to set a buy stop in the market, in this case, it's gonna be a stop limit. What's gonna happen is that if I click above the price, you can see that this order is now a buy stop, meaning that if the market now trades to this price, this order will trigger a buy limit order. Now this is very convenient in fact, because let's say you're scalping an option. Let's say you've got a quote monitor going. You're not gonna have a lot of time to say, put in a stop limit order, then go ahead and select your stop price, go ahead and put in your limit price and all of that. Being able to click on the book trader basically with one click and have your stop limit offset at the correct amount is going to be very beneficial. So for example, let's say I know I need a stop at 150. I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift 
click on that price and boom, my stop limit is in the market with the desired offset that I have for an option contract that's gonna vary depending on the spread of your contract you're trading. I generally use three cents for NASDAQ options. I think we've covered hotkeys pretty well for the book trader. If you have any questions on that, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer it. All right, so a couple of little final things before we end the video. One annoying thing in this book trader is when the columns get messed up. Unfortunately, there's no way around this other than to resize them yourself. So a lot of the time you're gonna end up with the columns looking all weird and they'll be all scrunched up. And the only way to fix it is simply by resizing them yourself until it looks fine. So in the case of this TWS layout I have created, you can see that I've made the book trade up here on this side and I've scrunched it in a way where all the numbers are very apparent and I've made the status columns relatively small because they are in fact not that important. You see that the status column is not really important. It's just gonna show you a green light there showing that your order is active in the market. If you also use a quote monitor at the same time like this, you can see your order active there as well. And that is pretty much it. The last thing I wanna say is the sound manager. So what happens is that these things are all enabled by default. So every time you click on the book trader, it's gonna make a sound. If you don't want it to make any sounds, then just go into this sound manager and uncheck all these boxes and it will be quiet for you. <laughs> all right, so finally, I want to make a brief comparison to Jigsaw. Okay, so this is the Jigsaw DOM right here and again, in reality, there's no comparison between the two, but they are both able to do the same thing. If I click on the bid or the offer, I'll be able to prompt limit sells, stop sells, and all that stuff. So if I click above the price on the ask side, it's gonna create sell limits. If I click below the price on the ask side, it's gonna create sell stops. The book trader can do all of that. Now there's one feature that Jigsaw has that TWS does not have. It's that if you're in a position and your position is closed, all outstanding orders get canceled automatically. I could have a bunch of buys here, but if my position gets closed, all of these orders get canceled automatically. That's one of the most convenient things in Jigsaw that Trader Workstation doesn't have, unfortunately. It's not super game changing, but it's just a useful feature. And again, it's gonna be useful if you're trading really fast paced environments where you need to put in an order, but then you don't have a second to cancel your other order, and then sooner or later, and then boom, the price moves against you. So that's more of a scalper's perspective. That's gonna cut it for this video, guys. Talking about the book trader and TWS, I wish you guys all the best and see you in the next video. Take care, bye.